Hey class, welcome back. Uh, let's have a quick discussion about the dissociative disorders. These are very, very interesting and maybe what you generally think of when you think of psych disorders. So the dissociative disorders are um, a category of psychological disorders in which extreme and frequent disruptions of awareness, memory, and personal identity impair the ability to function. So there are frequent disruptions of awareness, memory, and personal identity. So you might have amnesia or um, uh, a splitting off of the personality, or you might experience yourself floating outside of yourself. Um, the dissociative experience is a break or disruption in consciousness during which awareness, memory, and personal identity become separated or divided. So there are three basic disorders that we want to take a look at. One is dissociative amnesia. This is where uh, we have amnesia, not because we had a bump on the head and something physical has happened in the brain, but there has been such an upsetting experience uh, that we dissociate from our memories. So it's the memory part there. There's dissociative fugue, and this is where uh, there is amnesia, um, and you travel. You, you leave wherever you were living, and you go somewhere else, and you start living kind of a new life. Um, and then finally, there's dissociative identity disorder, um, where personal identity is, is disrupted. Um, this used to be known as multiple personality, but now it's known as DID or dissociative identity disorder. So dissociative amnesia um, refers to partial or total inability to recall important information that is not due to a medical condition. The person develops amnesia for personal events and information rather than for general knowledge or skills. So they know how to cook and they know where the post office is and they know who the president is and they know how to go grocery shopping and do math, but they don't know who they are. They don't know where they've been. They don't know what's happened to them. The personal events and information are gone. Um, dissociative fugue, you have that plus they suddenly and inexplicably travel away from home, wandering to other cities or even other countries. So I um, linked uh, this uh, quick video for you from ABC News about this woman who had experienced um, dissociative fugue. Her name was Hannah Up. Uh, so take a look at that. It's a very interesting story. She traveled far, far away from home. Um, and it was a little bit unclear why, uh, because nothing terribly disruptive had in fact happened to her. Okay, let's talk about DID or dissociative identity disorder. Um, so I share with you this uh, book um, called I Am We um, by uh, Christine Patillo um, and the gang, as she calls them. She has multiple personalities, and I also linked a little video for you um, that uh, shows her, um, and she talks about her disorder. Um, so let's get some of the characteristics out of the way. People may adopt as many as a hundred new identities. Uh, the average number though is about 15. Some identities are complete with their own behavior, voice, and physical gestures, but in other cases only a few characteristics are distinct because they're only partially independent of each other. Um, so let me unpack this a little bit. So um, if you have a, a complete personality, it might be um, you know, everything is different and it's kind of a fully developed personality. But maybe you have um, a three-year-old personality and it might only be partially distinct because it's very young and hadn't fully developed. Uh, what would these different personalities be like? Um, yeah, let's talk about the alters and then let me talk about what some of those might be like. So the alters are the, the, the name for the alter ego or the different personalities or identities that you see in DID. Some alters are known to the host identity and some are not. The host identity is the identity, it's not the, it's not you. Suppose you have DID. Um, you are not the host identity. The host identity is one that kind of runs the show. Um, it's kind of the go-to and the host typically knows a lot of the alters, but not all of them necessarily. You as the individual probably don't know, um, at least at first, that you have these alters. Um, one of the upsetting things about DID is that you'll lose large um, swaths of time 
kind of come to and, and not know how much time has passed or where you've been or what you've been doing, what had happened was that, that one of the altars took over and was living for you. And you have amnesia for that. You're not aware of what has happened. So here's, a, here's some examples um, of what happens during this, because the dissociative amnesia happens during the switches. Um, so I read a case study of a woman named Wendy. Uh, Wendy was violently, violently sexually abused uh, by her mother and men that her mother recruited to come and abuse her. Um, Wendy developed uh, a male alter ego because at one point, Wendy... Um, and her brothers were kind of being auctioned off to a group of men and the men could pick which of the children they wanted to abuse and they picked Wendy. And so Wendy began to develop a male altar who she thought could protect her from child, uh, from sexual abuse. She also developed an altar that was very sexual. So Wendy had discovered that sometimes it was actually less physically painful um, to endure the abuse if she acted like she enjoyed it. Um, and so she had a, a, an altar that acted out sexually. As she grew up and became an adult and was no longer in her mother's home and no longer being abused, what she was finding was that she would wake up um, in a man's house and not know how she'd gotten there. Her sexual alter ego would act out sexually toward random men, and she would go home with them and have sex with them. Um, and so this was a behavior that helped her as a child, but was obviously not helping her anymore. Um, so that's a, this is heavy stuff. Um, the identity fragmentation is is the and the dissociative amnesia are the two major characteristics of DID. So these are these are characteristics that are um, that helped the person when they were a child. Um, they were protective in some way, and so Christine Patillo actually talks pretty movingly about not wanting to try to integrate. Usually, the goal of of therapy with DID is integrate the personalities into one. She doesn't want to integrate. Um, she sees them as helpful to her in some way, and so she she wants to keep them. All right. So I've got the uh, I've got the video uh, linked on Canvas for you. Click there. Um, my Peter was glitching out. Um, so hopefully you have a chance to watch Christine's uh, video. It's only about six minutes long, really, really um, poignant. So what causes DID? Um, almost every patient with DID reports being horribly, unspeakably abused as a child. Um, you know, think about it. What do you do if you're a child and cannot escape? Well, dissociation would help you get through that. Um, the research indicates that um, children older than about... Uh, seven, eight, or nine, somewhere in that range, um, if they are horribly, unspeakably abused, um, typically don't develop a DID. They're, they're too old for it. Somehow the dissociation doesn't work as effectively um, as, a, a, as an escape mechanism. So 97% of patients who have DID experience significant trauma, usually sexual or physical abuse, and 68% of them experienced incest. It's really um, quite, quite a traumatic thing to learn about and to experience. Okay, um, that's it on DID, and I will see you in the next video for Childhood Disorders.